Good evening, everyone. I'm Gina Heuske. Welcome to the 28th Octoprint on Air. Um, today is a Friday, the 13th. I hope that this will not bode unwell or badly for for the. Um, this is confusing. Sorry uh, for the for for this um, broadcast. Um, even though I uh, now am using a new uh, YouTube streaming device thingy, which is why I'm constantly looking up to my upper right and getting a bit puzzled by the new interface. Um, yeah, let's hope this is not going to be too distracting. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's the final episode uh, of this year before the holidays. Um, uh, I had two options uh, going into this broadcast. I figured either I wear a hockey mask or I go with, uh, yeah, with something like this. I figured this would maybe be a bit more appropriate, considering that Halloween has already been passed. Um, yeah, so uh, a short outline as usual. I will talk to you first about what I've been up to, then what the next steps will be uh, going forward and the development of Octoprint and also in what I'll be doing and all that. Uh, then, we'll, we'll, uh, then we'll have a quick look at the, um, at the usage stats of the past um, uh, month. And uh, then we'll have a very, very short Q&A segment uh, because there was only one question left in the back backlog. Um, uh, as usual, there is a live chat to the right on the desktop, which should be there. <laughs> um, uh, then uh, and below on mobile, and I will also keep an eye on that. It will be on my side over there. Um, keep an eye on that. So if 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 you're watching this live and you have any kind of questions, then feel free to ask them, and I will sure to uh, I will try to make sure to address them during the Q and A segment. Um, yeah, uh, that was that. So. Uh, what I've been up to. So um, you might have noticed Octoprint bombarding you with notifications uh, and, and release announcements for release candidates for 1.4.0. So I released the first RC on November 25th and then the second on December 2nd and the third just yesterday on December the 12th. And that will, this third one will also be the final RC that I do for this year, hopefully, un, un, unless something really, really horrible is wrong with the RC3. But so far it's really looking good, I have to say. And um, yeah, that was also what I've been uh, mostly been busy working on. So I spent most of the last month preparing the first RC and then pushing it out and then weeding out any kind of bugs that were still in it. And um, then pushing out another one and rinse and repeat. So this is probably also how I will begin 2020. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was the movement forward. So we no now have at least a release candidate that is also compatible to, um, to Python 3 because Python 2 will be end of life in uh, around three weeks. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, that also contains this nice granular permission system that a lot of people have been asking about where you can, uh, yeah, more, more, with more control, uh, decide what people are, what, what kind of users are allowed to do, what kind of actions and all that. Yeah. So, uh, and so far the, the uh, verdict on the RC is, is fairly well. So it, it seems to have less problems actually than the one or other maintenance uh, release, which is, wow, I did not expect that. Of course, also the amount of testers is a bit less than usual because I only released it on the Devil RC um, um, release channel so far, which I, yeah, which is actually the goal with, uh, with larger, potentially more broken uh, because bigger release kind of um, uh, release candidates to push them out there first. What I will probably do though um, is that the next RC, the RC4, if we need one or maybe if we don't need one and I would still do one and push that one out to the maintenance R R RC channel because right now I think I have only had something like 230, 240-ish testers for um, the one for all RCs and yeah, that is less, significantly less than for maintenance RCs. And I would feel way, way more comfortable to know that uh, the usual amount of eyes have uh, yeah, t taken a look at the new release before I push it out of stable. So that just as a bit of a heads up, uh, generally we'll probably see a one for all on the maintenance RC channel, unless I figure that maybe I don't shouldn't do that after all, but right now I'm heavily leaning toward it, I have to say. 
what else has happened? So um, those of us who have been following me for the last three and a half years or something ever or longer <laughs> ever since I embarked on this crowdfunding adventure, uh, might have known that Lulzbot was uh, um, a, a, a quite huge sponsor actually from uh, pretty much right from the get go. They joined in May, I think, May, May 2016. And as you might also know, if you're following necessarily, but well, think they, they have things that they now need to take care of that do not necessarily involve me first and foremost, but rather their own employees and their own people and their own brand and everything. So uh, I completely understand that for now they had to have had to had to have step back. That was a tricky sentence as a sponsor. But that also meant that uh, over the course of the past two weeks or so, uh, a lot of my time was also spent on trying to um, yeah, compensate for that loss of a sponsor. And uh, for now, it is, uh, I'm, I'm already very happy to welcome Big Tree Tech uh, uh, on board. Um, you might have, might know them from, uh, from, from the SKR, S SKR boards that they uh, publish. And, all that so yeah a huge thanks to them um but uh yeah i'm still looking for more so if you're a company and you're using octoprint and you're profiting from it then please 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 help keeping this project alive i had to do that now sorry <laughs> um yeah and also still in time for christmas i hope uh about two weeks or so ago yeah pretty pretty much exactly actually uh i finally did what uh, people had actually been asking me for for two or three years now, uh, which is putting merchandise shops online. Um, and uh, yeah, I figured I would just quickly take you, uh, show you quickly how that looks as well. Um, so there is now this Octoprint merchandise page under octoprint.org slash merch or also under, uh, under merch.octoprint.org. And I've linked everything that used to live under support stuff there. And here are the two merchandise shops where you can also get t-shirts and uh, mugs and some baby clothing because people ask for it. Um, yeah, so, and this is actually a, a, a quite fun new uh, motive that a friend uh, designed for me and which uh, I figured might be something that people like. And I'm actually also wearing it myself today. Um, so yeah, if this if something like this um, looks like something, oops, sorry, looks like something that you would like, then uh, right now I think you can still get it so that it gets shipped be before Christmas, but I'm not entirely sure uh, if if that still works out, but I think so. They are still claiming uh, that at least on the top of the page. So yeah, just as a heads up. Um, if you are planning to do something like an octo octo Christmas present for someone, then uh, yeah, order fast. Um, okay, so after that being said, what are the next steps? Um, first of all, and the most important one for me actually is a, a vacation. <laughs> um, I haven't. I, I have to admit that I haven't felt as drained as I feel right now in a very very long time. I was sick for a long time, then I tried to compensate for that, and I had to push out all this one four zero stuff. Also do the regular maintenance stuff on top of this. And now also this whole sponsoring situation happened. So frankly, I'm done. <laughs> I really can use some days off. And this is also what I'm going to do. Uh, right now I'm still only in survival mode, but come, uh, come next Wednesday evening, I'll just close, drop the hammer, close the book and consider this year work-wise done. And um, try to not touch anything Octoprint related unless I want to print myself um until uh january um and i hope i can actually manage that is sometimes that is a bit of a challenge admittedly yeah um in the middle of uh, this vacation though just like with my summer vacation there will be uh, a chaos event a ccc event um, namely the um, uh, 36th chaos communication congress in leipzig which i will be at, which which i will be attending and having a ton of fun at hopefully uh, so far Con in contrast to camp, I have not planned any kind of meetup for there because yeah, I, I, I pushed out a tweet if anyone was interested and I, I did not really get any feedback. So I figured, well, fine by me, no work. Um, but uh, if you run into me and see me running around there, then please, 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 uh, yeah, just say hi. I, I always love it to meet people who use my stuff. And well, I obviously cannot recognize you 
most most mostly at least i mean unless you now were octoprint merge because then i will know but uh, unless you don't uh, unless you do that uh, there's no no way for me to know that you are an octoprint user uh, so just yeah i do not buy it um Say hi. I usually have stickers with me and I might also have the one or other pin button uh, on me this time. So yeah, might be worth your while. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so that will be like this huge uh, fun event right in the middle after which I will probably need a couple more days to get my head back together. <laughs> because yeah, so camp was intense and I figured the Congress will not be that much uh, I don't know say if I should say better or worse in that case but uh, yeah I yeah so it will be somewhat intense and I will ne I will uh, need a couple of days more of sleep after that but yeah once I return from vacation and uh, uh, congress uh yeah probably going to need at least one week or maybe two to work through the backlog um uh from the inbox uh, from uh, from that period so this is usually something that I notice whenever I take let's say two or three weeks off i usually need at least one up to two weeks to work through everything that accumulated during this time which is a bit crazy but well it is like it is i guess yeah and once that is taken care of uh, the goal is to as i said to either, either push out an rc4 uh, if that one is needed and probably put that on the maintenance rc release channel or um or just push the RC3 to the maintenance RC release channel if that should prove to be totally fine. So so far I have not have uh, I have not gotten reported any kind of bug uh, that actually looks like a bug in Octoprint and not some third party uh, plugin problem. But well, it's only been 24 hours or something since I released RC3. The night is still young, so to say. That can still change, and I actually do expect it because only three RCs for such a major release is. Yeah, that would be quite unusual. Um, but still, so th that is the goal. I want to get 140 stable out ASAP, but I also will not rush it. So I will only push it out if things look stable and if it has seen enough tests. So um, by the community, because as you remember, um, I cannot possibly have any single printer and printer firmware and electronics and setup and workflow and plug-in combination on earth under this roof because, yeah, this is an apartment and not a house and uh, even if it was a house it would not fit. So, um, yeah, I, I rely on the community to help test these things and, uh, yeah, right now I do not yet feel very com uh, confident that everything is as covered as usual with with users testing things so yeah that needs to be increased a bit but yeah once everything has has proven uh, stable more or less i release it and probably at the very start of the week so just in case anything is wrong with it after all so the usual stuff actually okay so um that brings us to a quick look at the stats let me just quickly switch you over again and probably rather this version yeah um so uh, this is the last seven days uh why is it the last seven days and not the last 30 oh well it, regardless um this is the last seven days of uh, octoprint use across uh, the globe you see it's quite uh yeah quite spread out again uh, I'm still waiting for a little bubble to pop up down in Antarctica but yeah hope dies last um, so I've seen something like 45 instances in the past seven days it usually is more more, more like uh, 55 over the past 30 uh, 60, 66 years of printing and you also can see the RCs for the for 140 uh, um, show up in this in these version graphs here uh, we've had um, also a lot of printing across all the versions. One for RC3 is still catching up, so to speak. Um, 
as usual the sunday was the was the busiest day that's always the same i'm i'm, I'm really looking forward to if, if the uh, how how the uh, how how christmas will look like again because last year it was quite fun to see how people were printing a lot of stuff until uh, the evening of the 24th and then nothing for two days and then sudden peaks again so yeah that was fun um we'll see uh, okay, and uh, also here is a closer look at the one for all uh, distribution and I always find it kind of fun to see how so first people are updating to the first RC, then I push out the second and whoop, the stuff swaps and now we are on our way to the crossover. So I, I would say probably sometime either tomorrow or the day after this these lines should cross again, I hope so at least and uh, yeah. And I actually was lying apparently because there have been 364 instances all in all that went some variation of one for all in the past 30 days. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, and right, people that actually ran the RC are a bit yeah less so 200, 245, 101 already. And I have to figure out why Grafana is always covering things up with the scroll bar. This is so annoying. Anyhow, um, yeah, we've seen a couple of thousands of hours of printing time on the first RCs already. That is good. And that is also very um, reassuring. And uh, yeah, let's see how, how RC3 develops over the next couple of days. Um, that's going to be interesting. And also since uh, these stats are now quite interesting after uh, 1312 got a bit more widespread, um, the list of of commonly installed plugins is getting interesting now. So uh, we used to only have stuff that was newly installed during the duration, but now we uh, now every Octoprint instance is also once per day sending the whole all the list of all plugins that are installed. So plugin identifier plus version, and that gives some uh, valuable insight for um, the plugin developers as well. Uh, the plugin developers as well. And yes, I still want to extract this information. I'm sorry. It's just it takes a bit of a lower priority than everything else going on in my life, but I have not forgotten about it. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, every time that things slow down a bit, I start looking into it again, and then something happens and. All hell breaks loose and yeah okay now nah, no i do not want to uh, whine around here but you know how it is i guess so yeah so the top uh, 20 plugins are uh octolabs battle level visual or let make it the top 10 because otherwise i just be rattling down names here uh octolabs bad level visualizer navbar temp timify display layer progress anywhere full screen uh, firmware update, uh, print time genius and dashboard and touch your has fallen a bit behind and yeah, so it's quite nice to see all this data finally and uh, make informed decision, uh, uh, decisions based on it. All right. Um, then uh, that brings me to the Q&A segment. And as I said, we only have one question this time. And I'm also going to do this so, so that you can see me again. Um, I don't know about you, but I also find it a bit weird when I'm hearing someone speak and only presenting stuff and I cannot see them. So yeah. Um, so um, the first question by Melinda is, uh, and the person only, I have to say, uh, how, lo how long did it take you to get the very first version of Octoprint up and running? Um, and this is actually a perfectly timed question, I have to say, um, because, uh, yeah, that was pretty much exactly seven years ago now. Uh, I I got my first printer in late November, mid, mid late November 2012 and had this problem that it sat here in my office and uh, it was producing quite a record and it took up my PC to, to stream G code. And so I figured I have to change something about this. So I figured I'll, I'll sit down over my Christmas vacation and work on, on, on some kind of solution or maybe find some solution and then figure it out. There is none and then worked on the solution, uh, to make it run, uh, to make, make the printer run, just getting G code streamed from, uh, from a Raspberry Pi, which had also been released in that year. And so I sat down over my Christmas break in 2012 for that very, very, very first version. 
And it started out as something like a plugin for Cura, <laughs> which what is, seems a bit weird, but um, Cura back then uh, had a machine control panel thingy, um, which is basically what I copied as the very first version of Octoprint, just as a web interface. And uh, um, so at first it, it was that you just, I, I built it into Cura in a way that you could call it a plugin, even though back then Cura did not have plugins, Cura 12 something. Um, and uh, you just had to provide a, a little command line parameter to, to start in Cura and then it would fire up a web server and serve this very, very, very first version. And a week or so later, I uh, so that was also why it was called Cura Web UI at first. And then a week or so later, people complained about the Cura dependency. And so I uh, I removed it and uh, or rather extracted it and uh, renamed it to Printer Web UI, a very creative name, I know. And um, that was uh, what it was named for a while. So for, for a couple of months, I think three or months or so. And then it was it got renamed a final time, or hopefully for a final time, uh, as uh, to Octoprint. Uh, and I remember posting about it publicly for, for the very first time on something like December 25th or 26th, after maybe two days or so of very, very intensive tinkering. And that was a very, very basic uh, web interface, um, but it was up and running and driving my printer. And I actually, I, I dug through my old pictures and I found a, a very ancient screenshot. And I think that must have been one of the first prints to ever run with what is now called Octoprint. And I mean, you see some famili fam familiarity there. There's no webcam tab yet. and. Um, the connection is a bit weird as well. It could only auto detect back then and that did not work very well and you did not see um, which file was being printed. So I had no idea actually what was being printed there. And everything was a bit different under the hood as well and very much hard coded and not very flexible. And yeah, but the basics are there. And uh, so this is like the, the very much proto, proto, proto Octoprint thing. So the first, in German, we would call it a Durchstich, which is basically um, the first end to end proof of concept of, of an idea. So you are looking at, at it. I know it's not very impressive, but it worked. And um, yeah, and the, the webcam tab is actually missing from that uh, because uh, I couldn't get it to work at first. So the, the very first idea, which I also tried and failed with uh, during these very, very first days of working on it, was driving uh, an, an, a webcam attached to the, the thing directly from within Python via OpenCV. And when I pushed this onto a, Pyth onto a Raspberry Pi 1, because that was the only one that existed back then with, it, with with its single core and 800 megahertz tops. And I don't know, I think it was only 512 megabytes of RAM. Maybe it was also only 256. I'm not entirely sure, but still it was horrible. So it, it throttled the print and it the, the images were like two frames per second or even less, maybe one or maybe one uh, 0.25 or so. And yeah, it, it was a mess. So I figured, okay, no webcam support. It's not going to work. And, uh, but it didn't, yeah, I couldn't just let it, I couldn't let it rest. So um, I remember uh, lying in bed at night and surfing on the phone and, and this stuff going on in my head and figuring oh, there must be a solution. And then stumbling across the MJPEG standard and that apparently some webcams do support it natively. So no, no encoding needed to be done and you could just basically pump it from the webcam out on, on an HTTP socket and uh, a connection. And then the browser could just use it, uh, utilize it, display it in an image. And that was when I started digging into that and going down that rabbit hole. And that was also when I discovered MJPEG streamer and tried that out and woohoo, it worked. And this is then how I think a week or two weeks later, this happened. Um, that was also, as you can see, after I had extracted it from Cura 
and but it still had the favicon from cura <laughs> and uh, the webcam tab was introduced and also a bit of time lapse stuff and this is not the very very first screenshot of a running uh, print with a camera but it was the only one that i could still find so apologies for that um and uh yeah so that was that you can also see that i realized that it was maybe not the best idea to not know what it is printing right now so i edit <laughs> this in the meantime yeah and it was almost also still having a bunch of information that uh, later i found was not really helping much and um also the streaming approach was very much not a good idea uh, in hindsight because it was pretty much loading the whole g-code file into memory before it was uh, before it started to stream it so when you clicked on on the on the little uh, select and select thing it would take a while to load the whole thing from disk into 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 memory and then it also knew how many lines there were which is why you have this information here and then it started it also estimated then so it did not did did not do the estimation during upload back then but when you click the file to load, then it would start estimating how long it would probably take and count the lines and do all this stuff. So you clicked and then depending on the G code size, you were like, hmm, okay. And then maybe two or three minutes later, you could actually start to print. So still, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is how things looked like back in late 2012 and very, very early 2013. And, um, yeah, uh, I remember that after my vacation, so I think that I think it ended around January 10th or 9 ish or something like that. And I, I remember being like, OK, that was fun. That was a nice project and it works now and it does everything that I needed to do and it's done. <laughs> and yeah, I, I was so wrong. I was so bloody wrong with this assessment. Uh, after that, it um, yeah, it blew up basically. So I started getting emails from, from all around the world and people on G plus, uh, commenting on my threads that I put it up, uh, put up there. So that was actually the first way that I published it on, on, G on Google plus rest it, rest in peace, Google plus. I, I still miss you. Um, and, uh, yeah. So all in all, uh, the rough first draft, probably two or three days. Uh, then I fleshed it out further over the course of one more week or so, but one more week of vacation. So not like one week of constant full-time work on it, but maybe it was two weeks. I can't remember right now, but I remember it was a couple of days where I did nothing else. And then for some days I did nothing on it at all. And yeah, it was just a pet project, a little literal pet project of which I had absolutely no idea what it would become seven years ago. Damn, I feel old now. And it exploded and it took over my life. And now I'm sitting here doing a broadcast for people that I've never met or at least mostly never met. I think from those in the chat right now, I've never met. <laughs> and yeah, I have no idea how that happened, but eh. <laughs> I, I, I guess uh, it is like it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So live questions. Uh, Quickly reading through, but apparently not, which I'm not sure if it is good or bad because we've on, only, only covered a half an hour so far of what was supposed to be one hour. Uh, so let's give it a bit um, that, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, on, on December 25th, in, instead of just only uh, celebrating Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas, you now know you can also celebrate Octoprint's birthday. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, even though it was not yet named Octoprint, but just, yeah, some very uncreative names at first. Well, happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Since there currently don't appear to be any questions in the live chat and me, as I said, being fairly drained and being happy to just call it a week already, um, I guess I'll actually now call it, uh, call it, uh, call it a day and, uh, wrap this up. 
Um, so um, let me just quickly. Ha, perfect. Um, so the next one, uh, the next installment of these. Uh, very funny, Brian. Brian as asks when Octoprint will be done then. Yeah, well, I have no idea. Apparently it's the users who decide that and not me, right? I mean, I already tried to, to, to uh, estimate that once and I failed horribly. So I figure maybe I should just uh, shut up about it now. And uh, well, it will be done and over with when it will be done and over with, I guess. And at least uh, as, as long as still people use it and require new features and maintenance and i can also afford working on it with of course is the other quiet huge side of the equation um i guess it will not be done but yeah <laughs> we'll see ah, and kevin asks is there a way to add more temperatures to the main screen currently not um i actually think someone was working on a plug-in on the forums um to do that if I could only remember right now who it was. Uh, but uh, ah, something was on there. And it's also been something that I wanted to actually build into Octoprint. And originally it was on the, um, on the, um, nah, great. I'm, I'm lacking English words right now, sorry. Um, it was planned for one for oh, it's not the word I was looking for, but it will work. Uh, it was originally planned for one for oh, but I had to scrap it because of other stuff that uh, needed to be done first. Python three, um, yeah. But I hope uh, that I will be able to add it in the next version. Uh, so the next, not the next maintenance release, but the next uh, bigger thing. Um, which will hopefully not take another three years like this one. Uh, or two years. I, I, so one for O has actually been in the works now since since late 2016, um, which is a bit bit insane when you think about it. But yeah, that was I think when the first stuff for the granular permission systems wa was started on. And whoa, that's been a long time. Hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. Um, ah, Jim is working on it. He just said, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just giving the live chat a, a tiny little, wow, this thing is getting warm. Um, <laughs> I'm just giving the live chat a tiny little more peace of mind, but I'm still going to rush through my wrap up stuff uh, in any case. As I said, the next one will, the next installment of these broadcasts will probably be like, yeah, more like end of January instead of mid. Uh, because when I return, you probably do not want to hear that I spent, uh, a couple of weeks having a, a nice relaxing vacation and then spend another two weeks uh, sifting through emails, which is not very interesting for a developer vlog thingy or however you want to call this. So yeah, I will see that I schedule it when I actually get back to working and can actually give an update on the, the actual meat of the work. Um, but I hope it will be the end of January. It could also be that it will be more like the, the start of February. We'll have to see. I, I simply cannot, I'm, I'm not able to estimate it very well right now. Um, as always, I will post the appointment on Patreon, of course. And uh, yeah, I, actually I might stay on Fridays now. I have to admit it is way easier for me to schedule these things on Fridays than on Saturdays and Sundays because I started getting into role-playing games, so pen and paper, you know, and uh, it's it's kind of tricky enough to find uh, and schedule appointments with people for them on the weekends. And if I then also have to say, yeah, no, that doesn't work for me on that day, it's get, it gets even trickier. So yeah, uh, will probably be the Fridays for now, for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah. Uh, with that being said, uh, live chat seems to be happy as well. That's good. Um, yeah, I hope uh, this was interesting. Thanks for being here and watching it. And um, bef because we will probably not see each other before again, uh, I want to wish all of you happy holidays. And um, as we say in, in Germany, einen guten Rutsch, which means like a, 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 good, uh, a good slip into 2020. And um, 
yeah i hope to see you the next time as well and uh, until then uh yeah have some nice days with family and friends hopefully and uh, some relaxing time for maybe getting in some printing and upping my printing stats preferably on the rc no just joking um yeah just uh, enjoy your time and uh, we'll see you next time then. Bye. Happy printing. <laughs>